What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia Season 3. And, oof, this was another really damn good episode in August. But before we begin, I got one huge announcement to make. When I saw this on Twitter, I lost my shit. My Hero Academia is coming to Toonami, baby! Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Finally, My Hero Academia, the series that a lot of us have been begging and playing Toonami to bring over, is finally coming on May 5th. So the day after Star Wars Day. Hail to the fucking yeah, boo! <laughs> anyway, guys, you guys know how much I love My Hero Academia. I don't know why it took Toonami this long to get the series. The only thing I could, the only, the only theory I can think come up with, it had to have been licensing fees to get that from, uh, from there. Cause uh, like, cause I don't understand how we got Black Clover, before we got Hirowaka. Now don't get me wrong, I'm lo I love Black Clover. I, I love the I love Black Clover. I'm loving the anime. Yeah, it has its problems, and you know it's nowhere near as good as Naruto. At least not yet. Grand, we're still in the early stages of it. But it's still a damn good anime, in my personal in my personal opinion. Anyway, I really enjoy it. I think the pacing is fine. I like the little. I like the. I even love the first three episodes when they had those little brief flashbacks. When the sadness was more or less just a flashback to when um, Austin, you know, were kids. I like that episode. So yeah, I mean, I I got no beef with Black Clover. I love the show, but I'm kind of like. It, I feel like maybe they're, they're just a little more expensive because I don't know. Maybe Studio Bones has more. I don't know. It should pay more for their series. I don't know if this was something with Shueisha. I don't know if this was just, if this was just straight up Japan. I don't know. Really, the only thing I could think of it had to have been licensing fees. I don't think there was a reason why we waited this long here because there wasn't. If because there wasn't license, I feel like we've gotten this like I don't know last year around when the end around like the end of season two. But I'm not complaining. We're getting it. May 5th, mark your calendars, I'm going to be watching, oh, I cannot wait to watch My Hero Academia, uh, and on Toonami, that is going to be, that's going to be, that's going to be the hype for you guys. Now, to the episode itself. So we started this episode off, we started with, uh, with, uh, with surprisingly, Class 1B, yeah, we started the episode off with those guys, yeah, 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 B, Class 1B, yeah. I never thought I was actually going to see them in this scene, I thought we were going to get them, like, one little joke. But, and maybe, like, we saw him go on the bus, too, but I didn't think we were going to actually, like, you know, focus on them. They are going to be like, oh, yeah, they're kind of here. We might see them once in a while. But no, it seems like there's going to be definitely going to have, like, a, a pivotal role in this arc. We're actually going to see a lot more of them, maybe get some extra character development, some of the uh, members of Class 1B, which I'm happy to see because I love Class 1B. <laughs> or, like, like, seven, or like, like, uh, like, Seven McMahon once said during the, the run with the authority and see Brian, they are just B plus players. <laughs> And A, and Class 1A is the A plus players. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that joke out of there. Anyway, so. So they're yawning, and we got another one of the heroes. I don't know who he is. I think we've actually, I think we might see him before, but I don't really remember. Anyway, first so like, he pretty much explains how, uh, what, more or less, why they're training. And he pretty much, uh, explains, he pretty much talks about, like, you know, about, you know, to... I talks about muscle fibers. Like, if you break your muscle fibers, when they grow back, they become stronger and thicker, and he says that quarks are very similar. It's kind of like how, um, in DBZ, Vegeta said in, like, the uh, Frieza saga, or it might have been the Namek uh, yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure it was a Frieza saga, where uh, Vegeta said, uh, when Saiyans go to near, uh, have near-death experience and they survive, they become uh, much stronger, which Vegeta used that thought, like, you know, he also had, um, Dende, like, like, shoot a, a huge hole in him, to, uh, and then he took him to, like, that little, um, healing chair, I don't even remember what it was called, to see, then he thought he was, became a Super Saiyan when he was nowhere near the level of Super Saiyan, Goku was like, nah, bitch, this is a real Super Saiyan, you gotta have golden hair, <laughs> anyway, so, so it kind of works like, kind of like that, and then we get to see what each member of Class 1B, or Class 1A, are doing to, with their train to help them, it says that too. That also works their course. So you put, you know, you you know, bring your course to the limit. They'll get stronger, and they they'll. They, so you first gotta break your body and regrow it, and like you know, just like you know, rebuild it. And it'll grow, and it'll re, it'll be back stronger than ever. So that's what happens. So they pretty much just have all these guys like you know, t taking their course to the limit just so they can get better. Essentially, they're pretty much training them like if they were in the hyperbolic time chamber, but without the benefits of being in the hyperbolic time chamber. You know. You stay in there for an hour, you've been in there for, for like two years, 
You know, for the hyperbolic danger. Instead, you're like, nah, you are going to feel like you have been training for a year when you've only been training for like a day. And so we got Bakugo, he sticks his hands into Boy Hogwarts. First of all, how the hell is this not burning his skin? I mean, I know Bakugo's quirk is exploded, so I don't know if his skin's, like, you know, designed around where it can actually doesn't burn easily. Where he sticks his hand, Boy wants to expand his, like, is it going to expand his sweat clad so he can make bigger explosions? He's just like, damn it! We see, um, we also got, um, Udaraka, she, we have Ida, he's pretty much just doing long distance running. That's what he's doing to, you know, uh, help to get to, he's doing long distance running. Udaraka is pretty, is more, is inside a bubble and also is inside a bubble to help her, um, control it better and also so she can lift more shit. We see her, like, carrying some rocks later on the episode. Jiro is, uh, is, uh, is um, throwing her, uh, headphone jacks or earphone jacks, whatever you, her jacks, into a wall to, like, get makeup stars so she can, um, hear better, or, like, use them more family so she can hear farther. Uh, same thing with, um, Kojo, I think his name was the guy that, um, the guy that can control bugs. Yeah, he pretty much, you know, he's pretty much just screaming at the top of his lungs to just, you know, expand his range so he can, uh, um, talk to animals from a uh, farther distance. Um, e uh, Deku, uh, Deku is pretty much just doing this little, I don't know, exercise where he, like, kind of, like, puts his heart arm, he's not going to do a bunch of, like, a trailer, like, where it's, like, you know, using one for all, he's kind of, like, punching a wall or something, he's just kind of, like, moving around, like, in, like, some dance move or something. Um, and Todoroki, he is inside, like, this, like, I think it was, like, a bowl of hot water, but he's, like, you know, swapping it to cold, then he swaps it back to hot to help him, like, you know, control his heat, to control his flame better, and hopefully one day maybe use him back at the exact, uh, to use both his ice and his fire at the same time, because he's going to use one or the other, the current time we know. Oh, I'm pretty sure we saw, I'm pretty sure we saw him using both at the same time in, like, the UA festival. You know, when he faced up against Deku, like, he used his ice while his flames were, well, granted they were, he was actually using his flames, he was using his ice and the flames were kind of just chilling. So I guess that doesn't technically count, but whatever. Yeah, and, uh, Sue is just climbing up some walls, Momo is just kind of, just, you know, sitting around just having shit come out of her. That's how not dirty that's like. Um, Minata, he's just, you know, taking off his balls, off his head, uh, constantly. And, you know, there's the other guys in there like, My God, this training's intense! And he's like, Yeah! Now get your asses in there and train to your heart and train till you till you're within an inch of your life. He didn't him. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing. That's why he's parents to tell him. And we also got Tetsu Tetsu to be like, We're such disappointments! I'm like, Hey! Eh, not really. I mean, don't really had high stands for you guys anyway to begin with. So then we get introduced to two new members for class, uh, for to the wild, wild pussycat ragdoll and tiger. And tiger is like all might, big. No, no, no he's like the uh, that dude on from Black Clover that is voiced by Chris Sabbath. I don't know, I forget his name, but he's like that big muscular dude in Black Clover. That's just a hit, he's like, you know, big, scary, the man you, a man you don't want to fuck with. And, you know, everyone else is shitting themselves at deck who's just like doing his dance move, and he's like, and he's just like, show me what you got, kid! And he like, you know, does one for all, five percent, tries to punch him, but he dodges it, and he just like, bit slaps Deku across, he lands on a tree, he's like, now you will crush your muscle, you need to crush your muscle so you'll get stronger, do you hear me, maggot? So after everyone gets everyone gets introduced, we see him, and we see Deku kind of just be like, huh, lay on the grass just to get a breather. And he's like, and then we have a little quick little flashback with Deck with um him talking about you know Walmart giving him the core, Grand Torito teaching him how to use the damn thing, and then he asks um he asks then he asks uh, Ayazawa uh like hey Ayazawa raise the head, you know if All Might's gonna come by by chance he's like. No, no, there's, nah, the UA is still like a target of the League of Films, so, you know, we're keeping him there, and he's like, okay, and then we get to see, and then we go, like, when we see him at, where it's like, you know, about to hit, not where it's, but where the sun is setting, and like, like I said yesterday, we ain't cooking your food no more, now learn how to cook and eat, make some curry, bitches, <laughs> I'm obviously paraphrasing there. So, and then Ida's like, of course, Ida being Ida's like, come on, man, let us make the best curry in the world, they're like, Yes, sir. Because everyone else, they're dead ass tired. They're like. <sighs> so and then they make their carry. Then we got Kirishima being like, if this was Arashiro, I take this back. But I'm, but but this situation, it's the worst thing. I'm guessing evil. I'm guessing when you're tired like this, even t something that tastes like shit can taste like. I don't know pizza. 
<laughs> anyway, so yeah, everyone, so everyone chows down, Momo's talk, and then um, uh, shit, I think it was the uh, acid chick that asked like, "Hey, Momo, you're eating a lot." You, he's like, "Yeah." And then she explains how her quirk works about how you know molecules, atoms, like you know, more she eats, the more she creates. He's like, and then we got Tape Man over there being like, "Oh." So, like, poop boards, and then we see her kind of, like, go kneel down with a spotlight over, and we got Jiro punching him, he's like, APOLOGIZE! <laughs> Sorry! And then, so then, oh, cause before that, we actually see people set up, set up the fire so they can actually cook the damn curry. We actually see Baka go, he's like, DIE! <laughs> but, DIE, of course, he doesn't actually start, but he just blows something up. Toroki, <laughs> just grabs with the flame in his head, and just feel you know, normal fire! And Uraga's is like, make sure it's not too hot! And Momo's like, you know you shouldn't rely on others. You should you should concentrate on, on uh, learning extra skills. She pulls out like you know those um those like lighter guns, whatever they're called. You know you just gotta click the trigger and the flame and the fire comes out. You know. So then we see Kota. She's chilling on like this cliffside by a cave, and his stomach's rumbling. Then it's like I heard that. And so he's like, Tah! and then he gets us like, what do you want, hero? And then he's like, then he goes off on a little, then he goes off on a tirade about how heroes fucking stuff they just show offs, heroes, villains, it's all stupid. My parents are idiots. <laughs> you know, he's like going off his tirade. And it's like, and then, and then Deku actually um, does kind of like what, Sp what happened to Spider-Man because you guys remember in Spider-Man Two. Um, when when Peter was losing his powers for no reason, uh, he went to that doctor who said like, "Hey, I have this dream. Well, it's not actually a dream. It's a friend of mine's dream." And you know, it's about like you know how he climbs a wall, but he can't, but he can't, but he keeps falling down. Deku does a similar thing where he talks about like this man he knew, but it's actually De it's Deku when he was a kid about how he desperately that uh, he did inherit a quirk. He and he, but yeah, he desperately won. We see him trying to, trying to breathe fire. We see like you know young little Deku. Izuku over there, you know, trying to like, you know, breathe fire, he's trying to try and tell him, he says, it's like, it's cute to see him try, but it's also heartbreaking because you know it's not gonna work <laughs> until, you know, he meets all my, we all, and it ends with like that shot from I think it was like the first episode where we see Deku, his eyes are completely wide, and he's like, he's watching the clip, and his mom's just like, you know, I'm sorry, Deku, like, mm, my heart, my heart. So, yeah, he can, so he tells him about this, and he's just like, so, and then he says, like, whatever, shut up! He's like, oh, sorry, I have, a t I have a tendency, I have a habit of rambling on. And he leaves him the curry, so, you know, he can eat it or not, or just starve for all we know. Anyway, so then we get back, and then, um, then Todoroki, Todoroki asks Deku, hey, why are you asking about, um, if all must cut you? And then he was talking to him about, um, Kota. Kota, you know, maybe all might could talk some sense in this kid, make him, you know, not hate, you know, heroes as much as he do. I mean, it, it's understandable why he hates him, you know. His parents are heroes and he died, so he's kind of, like, you know, angry about his parents, you know, in his eyes, abandoning him. So, it makes sense. It's almost kind of like, it's almost, he almost reminds me of you took that kid from Naruto, that he's pretty much that I'm sure Horikoshi took very much inspiration from, you know, the kid that that was always on uh, Naruto's ass until Naruto talked some sense into him in the first arc when he, when his father figure was killed by the man that Zabuza was working with, and you mixed it with, like, the people that hate mutants and the X-Men. Now, granted, he doesn't have, I don't think he's, like, as, I would say, vicious about, like, he straight up wants these heroes dead. I feel like he just hates the idea of them. I don't think he, like, or maybe he is, like, those guys that hate mutants where he just, you know, Hate some, you know. I don't think the kids like that, but it's like if you almost like kind of like mix the two, you know. Which also, guys, I do know about, and yes, guys, I am still gonna do my video on like a little on like you know the crossover had with the uh, hero I had with Infinity War. I have not to get started because I've been busy with all, and also the Bleach Brace summons for the Thousand Year Blood War character. Yeah, I've also not started that. I've just been busy with school, honestly, guys. So I'll try to get on those whenever I get the chance to. But yeah. I am still. Working. I still. I still do plan on, on making that video and also talking about how I think you could bring My Hero Academia into the MCU because knowing Disney's crossing over with that, it kind of opens the possibilities, you know. Anyway, I'll talk more like how exactly you could bring them. Although I do know you could probably work with mutants. That's all I'm gonna say. It's going to talk. I'm gonna be talking about. So I'm gonna be talking about mutants. Because I think you can actually work, and that could actually work well in, in My Hero Academia's favor. You kind of like mix it with Mutants now, you know. Marvel and Disney owns Fox, which means we got the X Men back, so. 
I'll leave that on the back burner. You guys can wait for when I go full on in depth. Okay, not in depth, because I'm not that much of an expert on comics, and I don't really do referees to this video, just spitballing more or less. Anyway, I'll get to that video when I get to it. Enough of enough of that. So, where was I? Oh, yeah, all oh, yeah. oh, mine. So then he kind of acts like, you know, maybe I'll make a top spin. And Togoro kind of like tells him, like, you know, man, man, you shouldn't really get into his, you know, you should keep your nose out of his business, blah, blah, blah. Togoro was actually the guy gave Deku a pretty inspirational speech. It was actually kind of cool to see. And then we also see, um, then at the end of the episode, we see, or around the end, uh, we see the League of Villains. We see them, you know, everyone gets gets suited up. And we got the crazy psycho bitch, I forget her name, which Chibi has said that is best girl. I don't know. She, I mean, next week I might figure out why he thinks that. Either she is, or he, or Chibi got some weird ass taste in women. So yeah, I'm curious about her. Anyway, so you know, she's like, man, this isn't cute. And he's like, you should be more worried about function over flash. And he's like, whatever. You can always make it a little more stylish. And so we see the other members. We then we see at the end of the episode we see them do one more. Exercise where they're kind of just walking in this forest. Um, and they're supposed to be teams of two. Deku gets his, it's number eight, but he has nobody, he's all by himself. <laughs> and he's like, Huh? It's like, Well, you're just really, it's not like nobody want, didn't want you, which I mean, he's right. I mean, who wasn't who wouldn't want Deku? I mean, it's Quirk though, and plus, it's Deku, he's awesome. I kind of wish, I kind of wish Uraka would come in with them, but whatever. But Uraka ends up getting Sue, and we actually see. <laughs> Bakugo, he actually gets um, the tail dude, he's like, and he goes to Rogue and be like, TRAIN ME! <laughs> so then Deku's with Bakugo, I mean, I, I mean, Bakugo is with Todoroki. And so we welcome to see him walking in the forest, we see members of class, one be pulling some prices on the guys, and then at the end of the episode we see there's like, purple, like, gas, and it's actually poison, so we see the, um, the redhead girl, I, I, her name is slipping my mind right now. Um, we see her guy like using her quirk to like cover the other person's mouth and cover her mouth because it's poisonous. And they get him, and then they know that it's, um, that's uh, smoke. And then they tell so everyone kind of like you know. And so, excuse me. <coughs> so then we see the other members. So then we see one of the we see the um, I want to say it was a blue girl in the wild wild pussy kids trying to like you know going out this game. She ends up getting jumped by some of the hero. No, no, she was grabbed and she was then jumped. Then we see her and they're like, you know, and everyone's like, oh shit, villains are here, well, time to kick some ass, <laughs> and that's where the episode ends. Ah, oh, man, this episode was fixed, like, the mo the part with Deku is telling, you know, Ko Kota his backstory about when, you know, he, when he was trying, when Deku was desperately trying to, like, you know, get a quirk, but he could, but he still never gave up, that was a nice moment. That is why this episode is, of course, also getting a 10. I was originally going to give it a 9.5 out of 10, but when I saw that moment and rewatched, I was like, no, this is, no, this is worthy of a 10. This is worthy of a 10. So yeah, uh, so yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you like, link to the description box below, and as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.